Welcome to the shortwave radio channel and this is another shortwave for beginner video and in this video we're going to talk about portable radios the types of portable radios that are uh, out there that you can purchase and what actually is the difference between a few of them and especially some of the features that come with it. We're going to be more specific on features in a later video, but here we're going to have a general idea as if you choose a radio, why would you choose one over another? Uh, and also depending on the price range that you have. Uh, for, you know, a good radio is probably um, what makes the difference in a lot of situations between somebody that will stay in the hobby or somebody that will not. Buying a cheap radio that is no good will not help in the hobby actually that person will think that you know well okay this thing doesn't work and there's nothing out there to listen to and abandon real quickly so there are for pretty much every price range at least a couple of models that are very good and it's important to choose wisely especially for your first receiver the first type of radio and the least expensive most of the time will be the analog radio. So here is an example. This is for a cheap analog radio. One of the pretty sensitive and interesting radios out there, the Texan R9012. The analog radios have a, of course, a needle and they have often they're separated in different shortwave bands and are the most basics of receivers. It doesn't mean you can't get a lot with them because when they are well built and sensitive, it's surprising what you can have, but they also have flaws. Often they will drift a little bit. That means if you listen to a broadcast, you might need to readjust the tuning from time to time. Some are better than others at coping with this. They are often limited in their frequency range. So here you see that they have uh, different shortwave bands. But in between those bands, you're missing out on the other uh, shortwave signals that exist out there. You will also have more difficulty finding the stations you want because most of them are not super accurate. So that means that you'll tune around approximately where a station should be, but you'll have to search in order to find your station most of the time. That's why stations have what we call interval signals. So these are the most basics, but they're also the easiest to use most of the time because they have very little buttons. And for somebody that's not very tech savvy or that's not really good with technology, actually, this could be a good first choice, depending on how well you understand technology. There are some good models out there like this one, the R9012. There's more expensive ones. But um, this is really, for the most part, an entry-level receiver. You also have in portable receivers the ones that are a little more advanced and that have um, digital tuning. That is PLL synthesized tuning. What is that? It's simply a fancy way of saying that they have a frequency readout. And the frequency readout, of course, is really... I would say that if you buy your first shortwave radio today... Um, getting a version with the frequency display is probably a good idea f because it's much easier to tune the signals you want to have. It's easier to find those signals. Now, some are limited once in their frequency ranges, but in general, the ones that have frequency displays are often uh, wider in their tuning range of shortwave signals. So they make tuning easier. And if they have, because not all, the, all of them do, some have a keypad for, of course, frequency entry. That makes it even easier when you want to tune a signal and you know it's frequency. You just punch in the frequency and you're there. So this is a more advanced receiver. They're a little more complex to operate in general, but they tend to make your tuning of signals easier because there's the frequency that is displayed and they tend to be more precise in their tuning. The other added thing of these receivers is that some of them are AM only. That means that you'll mostly listen to international broadcast bands, but some of them have a feature called SSB or single sideband. 
that will add an extra layer of listening, often meaning that you can now listen if you have SSB or upper lower sideband. You have the ability to listen to amateur radio operators and also to utility signals. So it opens up a whole new world in shortwave listening. Once again, not all versions and not all radios are equal. And so choose wisely. It's important to uh, do a little bit of homework and, and learn which ones are better than others to uh, use on the shortwave bands. So that's pretty much in the portable side, uh, a quick rundown of the two types of radios you'll actually see, the analog style and the ones that have digital displays that often makes it easier to tune. Hey, if you enjoy our videos, please subscribe, give us thumbs up. Thank you for watching.